opinions expressed by the host of black talk radio news and any guest represents their views and their views only and do not necessarily represent the views of the black talk media project or the black talk radio network hello and welcome to this broadcast of black talk radio news my name is scotty reed i'm broadcasting from behind the enemy lines of usa inc and i got a frequent friend of the show y'all know him uh, Kwabana Rasuli of Clear the Airways Project.org. Make sure y'all check that out. I'm going to bring him on in just a bit to chop it up, but let me give y'all an intro on what we will be speaking about. So I saw this article a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, um, from the Jakarta Post.com. And that was published on July the 3rd. So, man, that was like last month then. And, but I guess I did not see it to a couple of weeks ago. But as for those watching the video, you can see in the headline that it says, Indonesian Broadcasting Commission bans 42 songs from being played before 10 p.m. And I immediately thought of Clear the Airways Project and the other organizations that have been working on this for years. So here's a little bit from that article. The Indonesian Broadcasting Commission has prohibited radio stations from playing 42 songs before 10 o'clock p.m., claiming their lyrics were considered immoral. So what is in those 42 songs? For example, they contain words of violence and obscenity or allude to sexuality. This is attributed to law number 32 of the Broadcasting Code of Conduct and Standards of Broadcast Programs, which states that radio broadcasting is in the interest of national integrity to build the character and identity of a nation that is faithful and pious. Uh, Adiana Slamet, the head of the West Java KPI, told uh, Dete News, radio stations are also asked to censor lyrics that are not in accordance with Indonesian norms before playing the 42 songs. Now, I will link to this in the description of this podcast where you will be able to check out those songs. And let's go ahead and get Kwabna unmuted. Uh, welcome back to Black Talk Radio News, Kwabna. How are you this evening? I'm good, my brother. How are you? I'm, I'm surviving behind these enemy lines. You know, it's a crazy time right now. But when I first saw this, saw this, bro, you know you was the first person I hit up with it, man, because you have been in this fight. Man, it seemed like for decades, it's probably been over a decade, man, you know, since I've been knowing about you and your work. And just today, I saw a memory on social media on, on the Facebook uh, from 12 years ago where I was calling out where you had this little young boy who they had out there doing this murder music and talking about murdering people, just very, very, very vulgar. So, you know, what was your initial thoughts when you saw this article, especially since, you know, y'all just heard from the FCC on a complaint y'all had on Chicago radio stations about this, this very thing that's being spoken of in this article? First of all, I'm going to say something about that memory that you shared from uh, from a year, almost a decade ago. It was about a little rapper named Lil Mouse. Lil Mouse, uh, part, of the, part of the drill music scene in Chicago. Lil Mouse is, is dead. You know, he was killed uh, since uh, not too long after that message in the same old fratricidal wars that continue today. So that, when I saw that, I was like, wow. So yeah, and I, uh, secondly, you're right. I, you know, just listening to what you were talking about in Indonesia and some of the things about the character of the people and, and why they have to do that with the music. It's the same thing 
that the United States has with the Federal Communications Commission. While they uphold the First Amendment rights to free speech, they also said because our children are listening at certain times and the effects of, that this has on the developing minds of children, we got to make sure that the content is not indecent, not profane between the hours of six in the morning and 10 o'clock at night, similar to Indonesia. And then they say after 10 o'clock, they give them a little leeway. Yeah, Quab, now I think you said that wrong. You mean from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. where all children are supposed to be in the bed. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. So that's why they have the decency standards that say you can't do anything indecent or profane during those hours of six in the morning until 10 o'clock at night because yeah, you're right, the children are most likely to be up or listening at those times. But after 10, like you said, when they're supposed to be in the bed, they give them a little leeway. But they also say that I've seen content, no matter what time of day, is never allowed. Right. And it goes along with what uh, Indonesia's doing. But I, we think that because it's because it's targeting uh, the African masses, black people in this country, that those are the reasons why it's allowed because, you know, we are the only one that is pushed to. That, you know, are the subject of, of this demeaning and degrading and violent content that is damaging the character of a, of a people, of a mass of people. Yeah, that, that certainly was made clear in that article about Indonesia's regulatory radio body, you know, speaking on that. But that's in stark contrast, as you just spoke on, with those similar rules being in place here in a quote unquote Christian nation. But it ain't even about religion. You know, it, it's about what do you want the character of your people to be? You know, obviously they recognize, like Malcolm X recognized a long time ago, that media controls the minds of the masses. It's one of the most powerful entities on the face of the planet. But that's in what, what this regulatory body in Indonesia is doing, which is one of the most, I think it's the, if it's not the most, it's the second most populous Muslim country. Um, but again, it's not about religion, and I only bring religion up because how many times do we hear, "Oh, this is a Christian nation," and you know, you got a, you got churches everywhere. And I'm not just talking about in the black community, but in every community, you got a church, or you got a mosque, or you got um, uh, a synagogue. But yet, that community, which is supposed to be like the vanguards of morality, and protecting, you know, uh, people, especially children, from this stuff, they've largely been absent from this. Am I mistaken in that? I'm I'm unable to hear you, Kwabna. Let me uh get you unmuted again. Hold up. There you go. You bring that up because I was just speaking with a comrade of mine who was telling me how some Hebrew Israelites, you know, speaking of religion, some Hebrew Israelites that he you know were just talking about how. These songs talk about de uh, demeaning and degrading women. Pornography drops so many N bombs, call our women bees, brags about shooting and killing us. And then they'll say, then they'll, when they get an award for it, they'll thank God. <laughs> you know? And he was talking to me about that same piece. I said, yep, that's what they do. Either they'll thank God or they'll say, only God can judge me. You know, after spitting all this, all this venom that's against. Uh, the, the, the rules of, of the creator. So that again, that talk about destroying, uh, destroying people and their morals. So yeah, it's right on the same line. And, and Malcolm told us, you know, the media and the media has a formula down. They know exactly what they're doing. My, my co-host of this radio show we do, this conscious hip hop show, she's, she's been going finding new music. So she said, well, let me just see what's happening in mainstream hip hop. She did this uh, earlier this week. So see if we can get some more stuff on our playlist, see if there's anything conscious in mainstream hip hop. Well, not only was, was there not anything conscious, she said out of the hundred, uh, she went over a hundred song list. She said out of the hundred songs is getting the most play right now, 97 of them were ratchet. When we say ratchet, we mean violent, vulgar, uh, dropped in bombs, B bombs, and just materialism and, and drug usage and all that. 97 per 97 of them so 97 percent of the top 100 songs that are being broadcast on these uh on the media outlets goes beyond radio for our people are just damaging and and if the thing is brother scotty those songs are targeting our children and youth 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, for those that didn't catch you on a previous podcast here on Black Talk Radio News, tell them exactly the reply from the FCC lawyers. And when we say FCC, we're talking about the Federal Communications Commission. Okay, I should have had that up, but I do have another piece where we can pretty much, I can pretty much summarize what they said. Um, so, and we, we filed complaints against Crawford Dontron, and Crawford Dontron is a uh, radio conglomerate that's based uh, in, in Colorado and Los Angeles, but they have a station out here also in Chicago. They have a few stations. But one of the stations they have is WPWX, which is a ratchet killer radio station targeting black children, black youth, African youth with messages of destruction. In Birmingham and other cities throughout the country, they play conservative talk and Christian music, Christian talk. But here, this is what they play. And I just talked to uh, someone who, who's familiar with their with what they do in that station. She's, uh, and uh, she says that all the money they make in Chicago playing this ratchet crap and the other crap they play, that, that's enough money to... Um, make uh, to hold up the other stations the rest of the stations all around the country just the money they make in chicago hey i got an analogy a perfect analogy for that just like basketball and football in college sports pays for all the other sports so that's what you're saying that the bio wow. the violent the misogynistic the pornographic um programming that they're targeting uh urban areas aka black people with the money they're making off of corporate America that, you know, corporate America in the last few years, especially since the murder of George Floyd, been talking about Black Lives Matter. But how can you say Black Lives Matter when you put advertisement on radio stations that that promote the murder of Black people? And, and so, yeah, please continue. Oh, yeah. So we filed a complaint not only against that Crawford station, but also against the iHeart station. And iHeart they have killer radio stations in, in, in Chicago, which is uh, WGCI, but they have stations in New York, in Philadelphia, in Indianapolis, in Memphis, in Birmingham, and all around the country pretty much that spews, spews this poison at our young African children. So we uh, filed complaints against uh, both of those stations, Clear the Airways Project did. And they're, like you said, their attorneys were made to respond back, and we responded back in kind to rebut you know, their excuses. So what we wanted to... Uh, take their license. WPWX, their license had already been renewed. So we were, I wouldn't say behind the eight ball, but we knew that. We knew their license had already been renewed. So we're saying you should just take their license because they're violating your decency standards constantly. Uh, the power the station, their license wasn't up for renewal until November 30th or December 1st. And we were way ahead of that game. So this wasn't, the last time we had heard from them was in October of 2020. It took us getting hold of uh, the new congressman Frank Mervan of uh, Northwest Indiana, uh, because uh, the FCC reports to Congress. But we had to get hold of him, and he had to put pressure on the FCC to give us a decision. And they only gave us a uh, decision on the Dontron station. And some of the things they said was that, well, their license already got renewed. Well, we knew that already. So the other thing was, again, to take their license because they're violating the aforementioned decency standards of no profane and indecent content uh, between the hours of 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock, and no... Uh, obscene content ever. So, so, but, but, Quabner, forgive me for interrupting, no. but okay, their license been renewed, and like you said, it can be taken. But at least, if you don't want to go that far, is to put them on probation and sanction them if you really cared about enforcing your own rules. Exactly, exactly, brother Scotty, and so that's what, we, and that's what we get at. And so we finally got a decision from them about a month ago now. And their decision was to dismiss our case against the Dontron station. And we haven't heard anything about the iHeart station yet. But one of the things they said was, again, that, you know, that deadline had passed, again, which we already knew. But also was that because of they trust that these stations will do what's in the best interest of their listeners, of their community and their listeners. That's pretty much what they summed up. They said that so them playing songs back to back to back to back to back to back about killing us, about shooting us and killing us, calling us in, dropping in bombs on us, referring to our women folks at B's and H's, uh, sexually assaulting the minds of the masses of our children is in the best interest of our children. This is stuff that a grown governor has to resign for. 
This is stuff that a grown man is already executive producer of one of the most popular game shows, long running game shows. He can't even start doing that right now because he was doing these sorts of things. But yet you're going to say this is okay for our children to be inundated with this. This is pretty much what the FCC did. And it's interesting also because this is the Chicago area and they're calling for the feds to come in and deal with the violence situation that's in Chicago. Well, the feds were already here and had a chance to deal with it. That's the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. And with WPWX, they failed. They did not do their job. And so uh, that's why we're working. We got to work with the people. But again, we still haven't heard their decision on iHeart. And iHeart is doing this all around the country, uh, spewing this poison, this fratricidal music among uh, the masses of our people in these containment areas all around the country where we are struggling to survive this place. Well, I hope that more and more people will get involved in this because it does take people power. It takes people contacting their own representatives. It takes people filing complaints against the radio stations in their local area because these are conglomerates and they're playing the same ratchet playlist in city after city after city. And it's not just in the city. We're talking about radio waves that broadcast outside of the city. So it's also reaching like I'm outside of Charlotte. I'm in a little rural area called Mount Holly in Gaston County. But if I wanted to, I could tune in to Power 98. And one thing before we transition um, is in that article, from about Indonesia, it mentions censorship a little later in the article. I didn't read that part, but it talked about censorship. It doesn't sound like they're censoring anything. Censorship would be to ban it 100% from the airways. What it sounds like is they're restricting it. They're enforcing decency rules while also allowing for adults who enjoy that type of content to tune in at the appropriate hour. So we're not talking censorship. And here in, in the United States, I don't know about in Indonesia, but a lot of people got smartphones. They got connections to the internet. They can tune in to whatever they want to tune in at any time. So it's no, I can't see anybody saying, well, I listen to FM radio and I, I got to have it. I got to hear it. You know, no, I'm, I'm not buying it. But uh, if you're an adult, why would you put your need to listen to this ratchetness ahead of the needs of the community, specifically the children in the community? Any final thoughts on that before we transition to well, this again, call? Well, again, again, it's the feds. And again, we have a serious problem in cities like 2020, it, it, between that 2019 and 2020, it was the highest increase in gun violence and violence on record in the U.S. 2021 is even worse. And again, they continue to push this poison. And you pointed out in, in the commentary you did recently about how about the hypocrisy with the baby. The baby was an artist, your homeboy, who was, a, who was an artist or who was a rapper who had a song, a number one song in the country and in the world, strictly about shooting and killing people. And so when we talk about this violence, the, the FCC, this is what they stated. They said their commission may take enforcement action based on broadcast speech that is directed to inciting or producing imminent lawless action and is likely to incite or produce such action. And that's the violence. And they said the commission declines to do so. However, a local court of competent jurisdiction has determined that the speech is at issue and meets the, uh, the Bradenburg test. And we won't get into that Bradenburg test now, but that's, that's another issue that we're dealing with. And that's another reason why we need um, warrior lawyers and, and people to work with us on, on these issues. And Scotty, if I may, just let me, because I, I brought the letter up, uh, response letter. And this is what they said. He said that, um, I got it here. He said, under the commission established analysis discussed above, the language quoted in CTAP's pleadings is not obscene, indecent, or profane. CTAP's pleadings rely on dis uh, discrete portions and brief lyric fragments of larger songs. CTAP allegations are conclusory and based on interpretation that lyrics allegedly aired on WPWX aired on WPWX hint at potential vulgar and indecent content. However, the commission has held that language using sexual double entendres and fleeting references or innuendos alluding to sexual organs or activities are not patently offensive. Moreover, WPWX maintained that if song lyrics contain explicit expletives and potential problematic language, 
Radio edited versions with altered or deleted lyrics are played instead. So, you know, that's that's part of the crap that they put out, that they're saying that the FCC put out, which is utterly ridiculous in terms of uh, in their response. And I still didn't get to the one spot. And, that, and you monitor, you know, uh, sometimes you will share um, live video of yourself monitoring the radio station with it on. Man, this is this is ridiculous, man. But again, you know, it's just going to take people who care, say they care about the community. I'm talking about the spiritual community. And again, it's not all about religions, but if you have this deep love for black people, how can we have these contradictions? How can you have this cognitive dissonance? And you just mentioned where it was talking about lawlessness and promoting lawlessness. The war on drugs has put more people in prison in the United States than any other nation uh, nation on the face of the planet. Yet, you that's a central theme. Drug dealing is a central theme of a lot of this music. So Too much of the music, Brother Scotty, and I, and I found a piece, and I must share this with you, because here, here's the part that we uh, that we wanted to share, which we think is just even so crazy, because we even, we even shared examples, like those examples. We shared those uh, examples with them, recorded examples. It's a we reject CTAP's argument arguments in accordance with the First Amendment in Section 326 of the Act, which prohibits the commission from censoring program material or interfering with broadcasters' free speech rights. The commission has held that it will not take adverse action on a license renewal application based only upon subjective determination of a listener or group of listeners as to what constitutes appropriate programming. The commission also recognized that licensees have broad discretion based on their rights to free speech, to choose in good faith the programming they believe serves the needs and interests of their community. So again, th these are European-owned conglomerates specifically targeting the young African masses in the Chicago area and, and a lot of other cities. So they, they're giving them that discretion to choose what's in good faith, and, and to choose in good faith the programming that they believe serves our needs. Songs about us shooting and killing each other. Songs where rappers are bragging about um, uh, eating the you know what, eating the pee like spinach, while she SSD on the way to the dentist. That that's in the best interest of us. Talking about us uh, uh, shaking people and shooting them with your with your uh, with your uh, automatic rifle with a bigger drum, putting a bigger drum on it. It's literally blatant. And this that's, this is what the FCC is stating here. So speaking, speaking of the people, as we mentioned earlier, uh, there was a call that went out from another uh, organization, including your organization, Clear the Airways Project, to make a plea to the people, to, to make a request to the people. If we're going to say Black Lives Matter, then we need to act like it in all areas of people activity. Uh, and so what was that call about turning off violent lyrics? The National Black Leadership Alliance put out an open letter to the music industry and also to the people. Uh, there is indeed a message in the music. And it talked about how, the, and you and I have talked about this, how the Grammys and the NAACP are in the awards and they give awards to songs that call for the killing of black people, the abuse and degradation of black women. And we, you know, the article, I mean, the, the letter pointed out examples of Chicago radio stations, examples of New York radio stations that play all this crap. And so one of the things that we said, you know, is that replace that N-bomb, replace N-I-G-G-A or N-I-G-G-E-R in these songs with F-A-G-G-O-T or J-E-W or K-I-K-E. Replace it and see if it's going to get an NAACP Image Award. See if it's going to get nominated for a Grammy. See if the FCC is going to say what they said to, to uh, people of that uh, group if they file a complaint. You know, and so that's one of the things that we're saying in that letter. So we're pointing that out. And we're also saying that, like you said, for us, and it's, 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 it says it's up to us. It's up to the black community to take the necessary steps to demand respect. It's if you are opposed to music that calls for the death of black people and the ongoing degradation of our women, turn it off. If it is being played on any given radio station or turn off that radio station, turn off any source of music that is playing lyrics that calls for the killing of black people. Turn it off. Hashtag turn it off, however you want to put it. Turn it off. 
you know, I'm reminded by a meme that I saw recently and shared it recently. I might have created it. I don't know. I create a lot of stuff. But anyway, it, it was featuring Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who was part of that women's group back in the 80s that was pointing to this stuff. And but the meme said that people who are who do not respect themselves are unable to defend themselves. And I think that kind of speaks to this situation. And, and it's speaking to us and asking us, do we respect ourselves? I, I can't tell. What do you think? Dr. Wilson also said, I looked at this quote not too long after she made transition, became our ancestor. I was watching one of her speeches. At the 24 minute mark of this particular speech, she says, rap music has annihilated the self-respect of black people. Annihilated. And she's right. You know, and you know, you don't respect yourself if you're constantly dropping in bombs on yourself. If you're constantly calling your women folk, our mamas, our daughters, our sisters, our aunties, B's and H's. If well, you're calling yourself a B and H. Yeah, or, or calling yourself that or N. And you're song, making songs about shooting and killing people. So just this summer, brother, we had two songs. I'm going to name two of the songs that were in the, uh, that were number one for a good portion of the summer. Early in the summer, it was a song called Back in Blood. Where the rapper says, I ain't got nowhere to go. I didn't shot up anywhere they was. That's in the chorus of the song. In the chorus of the song, it was number one Memorial Day weekend. A week, in, a week, at, a week in after that, the artist or the rappers who made the song, Pooh Shiesty, he's locked up in jail because he's in a strip club firing off his gun and shoots a security guard in the leg. Those week after that, the other artist who's part of that song, Lil Dirks, his big brother gets shot and killed outside of a strip club, south suburbs, near south suburbs of, of Chicago. Shot in the head. And they got a song out back in blood that they still play on the radio. We've had weekends, 60 some people shot, 70 year old girls getting shot, uh, 70 year old woman getting shot, um, nine year olds getting shot, 26 year old woman got shot the other day uh, in front of her children. It was right before the birthday of one of her children. One of the children is up there looking at her mother laid out, thinking she's telling my mama, you gotta wake up, you gotta plan my party. My party's going to be, my birthday's in two days. You got to wake up and do my party. She's a she got shot. And on the radio is, I ain't got nowhere to go. I done shot up everywhere they was. They still playing that crap. Just wow. Wow. And, and like my one of my daughters pointed out to me that she was listening to the station out of Charlotte, you know, Power 98, and she was like in between those violent songs, they'll be talking about stop the violence. It's just straight up hypocrisy, man. And we need, we need, not that we don't have capable leaders like yourself, like, you know, uh, Bob Law with the other organizations uh, that are involved in this fight, but we need more leaders to step up and not um, embracing the righteousness, as you pointed out, that Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, embracing this ratchetness. That's not the leadership we need on this issue in these times during these, with all of this death going on in our communities. But Kwabana, what do you have coming up, man? And again, I want to remind people they can support you by going to clear the airways project.org, clear the airways project.org. I know you got something coming up uh, particular to Gary, do you want to share that with us? Yeah, we have we have a press conference um, at in front of Power ninety two point three Crawford Broadcast, and we'll have we got we still have, have to get the date, so I'll share the date with you. And but it's coming up very soon, like in the next couple of days. Just got to get with a few other people to get that date. I just still thought it was important to mention that we're going to be doing that because we're going to be sharing this letter and this campaign to turn it off. Because see, not only do we have to turn it off as a people, which is the most important piece, but we also they have to turn it off. The, the sponsors have to turn off their advertisements on these radio stations that call for the killing of black people. You've heard me say this before. We asked the sponsors, would you buy commercials on a radio station that play music about shooting and killing dogs? And they're asking, and we asked them, why do you buy commercials that play music with lyrics about shooting and killing black people? And they're silent. And they still buy the commercials on there. So or, or gay people. Yes. You see what they just did, and, and what he said was incorrect, and it's not that we're trying to defend that, 
But it was quickly how quick his money or his bag, as they call it, was threatened when he said something that the LGBTQ community did not appreciate. And and so you saw uh, all over mass media, celebrities coming out uh, saying all this stuff. But yeah, he, can talk you about, he can talk about having, like you mentioned earlier, a gun with a 100-round clip and shooting up the block, and nobody says nothing. He, he can say, he can say, like, even, even with uh, the latest with, what's her name, um, Lizzo, you know, she was called a mammy. Well, hell, uh, this dude had a song out, said that he would burn him an end, which is me shoots an end, at the store where your mammy and grandmama shop at. That song, I'm thinking it may have even got a Grammy. It was nominated for one. I think it even won a Grammy. Barack Obama said that was one of his top songs. He, he talked about shooting some, uh, having a, a, a woman in harm's way. Wow. He, your mammy and grandmama shop at. He didn't say mommy, he said mammy. You know, Cognitive he, dissonance is now real. Now play on, on uh, WGCI, the I Heart, the No Heart Station, where he says, uh, it, matter of fact, in this lyric, this is a song by a rapper named Spot Em Got Em, where this the whole song is about shooting and killing black people, and uh, there's a dance to the song. But the baby has a remix where he starts off his verse bragging about his Grammy, and he ends up in his verse bragging about his Grammy. But in the midst of his verse, right around all the shooting and killing people that he's going to do, he says that she does whatever I say, I pee in a cup and tell her it's lemonade. So he's telling our, our, our women to drink urine. Yeah, where where these women groups, speaking of leader leadership, where these women groups that come down so hard on and, and they should on these conservatives. I mean, they going after Larry Elder, the black Republican running for governor in California for some some misogynistic stuff he said tw over 20 years ago. But yet they're silent on this issue. The time for silence is is over. It's so over. You can't be silent on this. And, and have credibility or because what it's saying to me is black people don't matter. Black lives don't matter. Okay. Scotty, That's Scotty, what the I, actions show. And Scotty, well, I want to make this point too, because they talk about the 10 um, anti-discrimination against uh, LBGQT groups who came down on the baby. And, you know, I don't think Quest Love was part of any of those groups, but he did also and others did too. But they talk about that. And we said, well, when um, Harvey Mason Jr., who was in charge of the Grammys, he got letters from, uh, directed to him from CMOTAP, which is a committee to eliminate media offensive to African people based in Los Angeles and New York, Good Research based in Detroit, the Clear the Airways Project based in the Chicago Gary area, uh, the National Black Leadership Alliance, and the National Congress of Black Women. But Harvey Mason Jr. ignored us. Now, this is the same guy when you go see this Aretha movie. He's executive producer. His name's all over the screen on that. So he knows good music. He knows better than to have this poison being nominated for Grammys. He, come on now. You guys have to draw, have to make a standard. Now, I can't think of the guy's name, but it's a country artist who dropped some N-bombs and said some stuff earlier. And even the Country Music Association dissed him for a while. He wasn't part of their award show. And he was like the number one country artist. Wow. If, it was good for the ganders, good for the goose. We need to do it too. Harvey Mason, the NAACP especially, Maxine Waters, come on now. Right. Well, Kwabna, again, man, I want, want to thank you for the work that you're putting in for all of us. And do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share as we wrap up this interview? Turn it off, man. Uh, hashtag turn it off. Spread that. Any source of music with lyrics about killing about taking the life of our people, turn it off. Turn it off. Now, this is Black August, man. We just we just had a, a, a beautiful program out here uh, recognizing Black, Black August. We had people from in Cobra, uh, Cam Howard. We had people who work in, in a lot of the areas here locally who's, who are doing beautiful things, man. On this, man, this this the, 20, uh, the 21st of August, this is the 50th anniversary of uh, when George Jackson died, uh, was killed. You know, in San Quentin, man, this, today is the 50th anniversary, but uh, it's Black August, man, and we, we, we need our freedom. We need our freedom, and, you know, they know they know the formula, what they're doing with that media, and we know it, too, and more of us need to know it, and, and more of us are, bro, more of us are understanding this issue, and, and but we realize, we need to realize that we have the power, and we must exercise that power to put a stop to this 
mass media assault on the minds of our people. It is a mass media assault on the minds, not just our people, our children and youth. We got to put a stop to it. Word. All right. So make sure y'all visit Clear the Airways Project. Kwabana Rasuli, you have a good night, sir, and you stay safe. You too, Brother Scotty. Appreciate you, man. Oh!